Hi Year 7, Mrs Smith here again and today we're going to look at some properties of metals and non-metals. Now you should have a sheet with all the uh, different things I want you to find out about and please just use this video like a resource, okay? You might only need some of it, you might not need any of it. The worksheet might be really easy for you, in which case don't worry about the video. But there might be one or two little bits that you need a help with, in which case... Just take a look and see what we've got. Now I'm hoping you will have, at the very least, two spoons. One metal and one non-metal. This one's plastic, but you could be using a wooden one. Doesn't matter, because this will be able to teach you most of the properties of metals. So, first of all, let's take a look at some of the resources that I've got. So, here is a piece of metal foil. You can see it's nice and shiny. It's reflecting what's around us. Okay, so metals are shiny. Not only that, but we can bend them easily and we can shape them. That means that metals are also malleable. Okay, you can say malleable, you can say malleable, doesn't really matter, but metals are shiny and malleable. So the next thing we need to look at is the conductivity of metals and non-metals. Now, this one's a slightly dangerous way of doing it. I'm going to show you this one and a slightly safer way. So I've got a mug and I've got a kettle that has just boiled. I'm going to put the boiling water into there. If you can see the steam rising, steam is actually not water vapour. It's water that's vaporised, hit the cold air and turned back into a liquid. Water vapour is invisible. Steam, on the other hand, is little droplets of water suspended in the air, just like fog or a cloud. Anyway, um, so we're going to take our metal spoon and our non-metal spoon and just pop them into the hot water. And then I'm going to feel the temperature of the ends of these spoons. And this spoon is considerably warmer than this spoon. That means that the heat is conducted through the metal. The metal's got hot. The plastic, nope, doesn't feel any different. Now a slightly safer way of doing it. I've got a metal dish and I've got a plastic um, dish. Okay, I think actually it might be uh, silicon plastic. Um, so if I feel it, this metal dish is feeling cooler than the um, plastic one. I'm going to put an ice cube in each one. Which one? Now, before I do this, I want you to predict which of these two is going to melt the ice the fastest. Remember, the metal is the good conductor of heat. Have you made a prediction? Have you written it down? Okay. So let's give it a go. And these are little ice domes rather than cubes because I couldn't find my ice cube maker. So let's have a film of them. Which one is melting the quickest? Now, hopefully you are able to see that this one has already melted around its base. It's lost the um, whiteness of the ice, whereas this one is still um, quite icy. We're going to come back to it in just a moment because um, I'm going to leave that going here while we talk about electrical conductivity as well. Okay, so this is another one where you can use... Actually, that's quite warm. This is another one where you can use your spoons. So I've got a small electrical circuit here with batteries, an LED and two wires. If I touch these wires together, the bulb lights up. If I touch them onto something that will conduct, like the spoon, the bulb lights up. But if it doesn't conduct, like the plastic, there we go, the bulb hasn't lit up. So that means that metals conduct electricity, non-metals don't. Is that true for all of them? I'm going to test a couple more. 
I've got two bracelets on. One happens to be metal, one happens to be non-metal. So let's see if these conduct electricity. Okay, so take them off. Non-metal, the, the leather bracelets. That doesn't look like it's conducting at all to me. The metal bracelet, the copper bracelets, has conducted electricity. Okay, um, one more test. I am going to use a pencil. Okay, so we've got wood. Nope, that's not conducting the electricity. But what about the graphite, the thing that you write with? Let's take a look. Let's pop one graphite in here and put the other end of the graphite in this one and see what happens. This, oh, it's lit up. That's interesting because graphite is made of carbon and carbon isn't a metal. So graphite is one of those really, really rare exceptions in that graphite conducts electricity. And it does so for the same reason that metals do, which is they have something called free electrons, which move. OK, let's go back to our um, melting ice domes. And oh, what can we see? We can see lots of water in this one. It's melted pretty quickly. But in the plastic one, nope, it's, there's no water. It's still the dome shape that it was earlier. Lots of water. So metals are also good conductors of heat. And non-metals are poor conductors of heat or good thermal insulators. Uh, thermal is just another word for heat. Thermal conductor thermal insulator. Okay, um, we also need to look at what property of metals makes them good to be wires. So I'm just going to cut the little bit of plastic off the end here. Um, let's hope this will come off nicely. Okay. And good. So you can see, um, you can see that inside this wire, inside this uh, plastic tubing, we have got a metal wire and I can bend it. Okay. This is a nice demonstration that metals are ductile. They can be drawn out into wires. And we need that because they're good conductors of electricity. Um, if they weren't all bendy and ductile and malleable as well, um, think about charging your phone. You'd pl plug your phone into the charger and it would stand up like that. And then you wouldn't be able to use it. As it is, you can lie on your bed, curl up the charger around you and still use it. OK, so that's another useful property. And it's covered in... Um, the plastic, because plastic is, as we know, a very good insulator. It doesn't conduct electricity. It's a good insulator, and so that makes it um, safe to safer to use. If you wouldn't want to touch the electrical wire that was uh, charging your phone, for example. Okay, um, we are nearly done. Sorry, excuse me a second. Um, Next one is uh, what happens when you when they make a sound? Well, what happens when something plastic makes a sound? That's a bit dull, isn't it? Um, this works best with a metal tube. I the best one I could find was a um, pipe elbow. But let's see what happens when we drop it. That was actually the first noise. It was quite a pleasant noise, wasn't it? Um, so that noise shows us that metals are sonorous. Sonorous just means making a nice sound. And if I were to suspend it and tap on it, 
that's a fairly pleasant sound. That's in fact uh, the musical instrument, the triangle, plays on this very sonorous sort of use of the metal. Nearly done. We are nearly at the end of your list. Um, there's one that asks you to look at pictures of cranes or bridges. OK, these are all made out of metal and they've got all these like metal wire strands, haven't they? And it, we're just so used to it. We don't stop and think that looks really precarious. Why on earth don't we have great big structures? It's because metal, like a spider's web, has a very high tensile strength, which means that you can use a lot less of it to make it strong. Now, we don't think of spider webs as strong because they're so thin. But if they were as thick as, say, the end of this spoon here, we could suspend a bridge using just that if it was spider web. But metals are pretty strong. Um, they've got a high tensile strength, which is why they're great for bridges. Last thing. OK, where are the metals on the periodic table? Here's my periodic table. And most of it is metals. So I want you to colour in the periodic table on your worksheet. Ignore hydrogen. Hydrogen is a gas. And you're thinking that means it can't be a metal. Um, it can under enough pressure and uh, very low temperature. Um, but all of these are metals. And these green ones, brown ones and blue ones, these are the only non-metals. OK, I think that's it. Take care. See you soon. Bye.